Holy shit! It's blowing his guts out up here. She's a bit bumpy coming in, and that wind's just barreling down that gully. It's brutally cold. Brutally cold. We're going to put two canvas tents there in this little spot an MIA and um, my, uh, my tent that I got from the States, the original gangster. What's going on mate? Why aren't you happy? Because you left the table behind and now we can't play kings and assholes. Oh, it was either Charlie or the table, so not you. That's right, Bryce has got the table. And it took a while to get this tent set up, so this is our, this is our home away from home. That's Bryce's little tent and that's our big massive doozy one there. Taj Mahal and Bryce is in the B&B. Oh, no, you probably would have swamped them up there, wouldn't you? Not looking bad. Nice catwood campsite. Nice stream right here. Beautiful. Now, after a lot of glassing, we've seen three bulls and five nannies. An hour and a half of glassing. Not many animals up in here. But it's middle of the day. We're just going to wait another hour or so. Then we're going to cruise up the valley and stake out the top end of the uh, this is the MIA 3 tent it's actually it's pretty good it's a lot bigger than the two not quite as big as my tent but still pretty cozy for two people and of course the MIA firebox here, which is bloody fantastic. I might get one of those. One thing you gotta be really careful of is the wind. You gotta make sure that you tie these tents down really well, because if it gets windy, they've got a nasty habit of just These gloves are awesome, I got them from Army Outdoors, I'll put the link uh, below here so you fellas can get yourself some, they gloves and mittens, thumb can go in or out, yeah they're pretty amazing, super warm and they've got fleece on the inside as well, yeah great, you can, they've got a bit of velcro that keeps that top mitten out of the way as well, yeah. great design. seen three bulls up there and a couple of nannies and a couple of nannies right at the top of the valley here
Let's go. We're out of here. We're going up the valley. So there's always so much fluffing around involved when one goes to head up the valley. Pack this, did I remember that? Head torch, stuff in my pack, stuff out of my pack. Oh, where's my thing gone? Oh, I've lost my other thing. Does anyone see my bullets? Where's my bolt? There's always that one guy that just fluffs around. <laughs> What's that pole called again? <laughs> Puff the poles. They look like we're real puff the woodies. <laughs> As opposed to pretend puff the. Alright, let's go up the valley. Oh, that wind's died off, which is great. Blowing his guts out this morning. Hopefully, there's going to be some tar close by. Boys have seen a seen a bull already just up there. Uh, he's only a little fella. I'm gonna leave him up there. Go further up the valley. There's, a, there's an animal up there. You just see it goes to rock, so just up that frozen waterfall with the snow on it. Yep. And then go straight up where the sun is in the back face. Yep. You can see it with the naked eye from here. What is it? I can see a nanny right in a cut. Only far away. Isn't he already small? No, they're just young ones. How many inches do you think that'll be? No, oh, I don't know. Not many, if any. Drop them. Can you just see them like this? Ah, for crying out loud. We're just sitting here, we're glassing, we're looking up uh, bloody way up in there. We're looking way up in there, we're looking way up in the other side. And there's a ball up there and there's no one up there. <laughs> Dave goes, oh look, there's one right there. And about 70 metres in front of us, a ball walks straight across the slip. Just right there. Right there. Oh, was it 370 metres away? No, it wasn't. It was like 30 metres. <laughs> when he shot it, it was 98. 98 metres. Wow, it just walked right across and it had good hooks and... Dave hasn't shot one over 12 yet, so we're like, smoke it. <laughs> this is the easiest tire I've ever shot. Unbelievable. I don't actually shoot it, but that's the easiest tire I've ever shot. Did he come right out of the creek and then up? No, I just 
not even here. Yeah, but I'm just wondering because that's where you didn't see. He must have been just in behind those rocks. Yeah, just around the corner, eh? out those other nannies. Do you want to get a rest, eh? Get a rest. Beautiful. Alright, we're gonna just walk over here at 30 meters and see what he's like. When I shoot a bull, I'm gonna sleep in it. Oh shit. Ground shrinkage. I think this is a different one because it's got a lot smaller. He's burned on this other side. Oh. <laughs> it's so weird, he doesn't actually look that big. <laughs> look at that mane though. But he's yeah. massive. Yeah, but that's the one I was looking at and I thought, man, that goes back to thin. But that is a beautiful mane, look at it. That's worth the money there, look at it. That's a trophy. It's the old. Look at that mane. So what happens when you shoot one that's under 12 inches, you go, wow, it's got a good mane on it. Yeah, a quarter on the other side. Great mane. Yeah. Trophy mane. Look at that. 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 Oh, sniffer hounds on the trail here. What you got there? Uh, fox alarm. Ah, uh, rock. Nice dark rock. Bloody rock tars. We've seen a few of those today, but we've seen some real tars too. Not many. A couple. Down of the police. Whoop, whoop. It's dinner time. We're going to go back to camp and have a delicious feed. And then Charlie's going to be the arsehole because we're going to play kings and arseholes and he's going to make us nice cups of tea and run to the creek and get us beers. At home, I was not the arsehole once. I reckon, I think Bryce was at the most. You were the arsehole. Oh, yeah. I was actually the king a couple of times. You really That's a good not. point, actually, I think. Bryce was chief arsehole last night, weren't you, mate? Yeah. I think I got off it once. And then I went straight back to it. Oh, yeah. I also got laid last night. It was great. It's, I've been, oh, well, this divorce is a long, difficult process because you can't have sex with when you have to get divorced. But it turns out you can. So there's light at the end of the tunnel there, folks. Bryce has got the shittest floss. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Come on, please. You must be knackered. At least 40 meters. The poor bastard's climbed at least for what? How, how long? How far? 40 meters? 30 meters from the valley floor to get the tar. Oh, he's done himself a mischief there. He just about needed Tenzing to get up here. Sherpa. Charlie's going to take the whole animal back, aren't you, Char? I did try to tell him just to chop its head off and kick it down the hill, but he wanted to take all this meat and skin off it and stuff. It's going to get dark soon. You, um... Oh, meat. Nice loins. Thanks, mate. Dinner time. Yeah, see that flat rock? All right, come on, John Snow, down the hill. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Off to the wall. Actually, we've got the wall, haven't we? Mm. We're, we're basically right on the wall. This is just south of the wall. We're going to go north of the wall tomorrow. We're going over the top. We're not actually. There's no way we're climbing to the top of that hill. This gentleman, <laughs> gentleman hunting. We might actually climb up that hill. Oi, hey, Charlie. Come on, bit of respect, mate. Let's go. We're going to slap it down here and come and get it tomorrow in the meat. This time we're going back to camp and having dinner. It's just down there, it's not even that far. There's a kilometre down the valley or something.
Oh, someone's dropped a glove. If this is your glove, low alpine written on it. Drop me a line and I'll uh, I'll post it back to you. Hopefully you haven't chucked the other one out. Oh. Made it. the cock up there. Bryce told me he bought these bricks from Mitre 10. So I went in and bought what I thought were bricks too. Turns out I just bought shitty pine, not bricks. Sawdust bricks, so only got a little bit of shitty pine to last us three nights. That's alright. Thanks for oh. inviting us. Cheers boys. Oh, Hands in the middle, there we go. Cheers. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. This episode was proudly brought to you by <laughs> Spate Summer Ultra because Endless. we're athletes. We're athletes, and also uh, this is <laughs> some kind of girly drink. Two he makes. Boss or boss or here? And. Oh, and lift uh, sugary sugar sugar <laughs> drink because we couldn't find any crack or cocaine. So. <laughs> Thirty-six grams of sugar in this bad boy. <laughs> Holy shit! They have a bit of nice bun, eh? Fresh white bread. Oh, I've got some bread in there. Have you? Yeah, yep. bread. No, I can't find the butter. No. I think I did, don't think I bought it. But there's bread um, just in one of those boxes here. You could all, maybe even get it with that thing up. It was lucky I uh, managed to pull this off actually because I think this has been in the freezer for two years. This stew. Well, bread. What's going on with this dang torch? Um, my, nah, nah, I'm off the carbs. I'm trying to get. Charlie? If there was butter, I'd probably yeah. fold. Oh, yes, please. Give us two bits, mate. Are you trying to keto again? No, I just off the white carbs because they're poison. Not even uh, wheat bread? Yeah. <laughs> Man, this is pretty good for two year old stew. What do we got going on here, bro? We've got a bit of pudding for Charlie and probably myself. These MSR cookers actually look better than the Jet Ball because I've got to get a better wind burner, wind protection thing on them. Sorry, Jet Ball, they gave me a free Jet Ball too, but MSR are just better. And that's the truth of it. And look, that, it's even better too, isn't it? That holds more heat or something. Yeah. Ooh, Jesus, and it looks cool. <laughs> what, are you, what are you going to have for dessert? Some mixed berry cheesecake. Oh, I don't think we've had that one yet, have we? No, that's the one Charlie raced at the best last year. Wasn't that apricot? Do you want another beer, boss? Uh, yeah, it was apricot, wasn't it? We didn't have a mixed berry one. You might be right. Apricot yeah, cheesecake. It was apricot, yeah. Yeah. Because it had those big apricots in it. Uh, uh, yeah, no, we haven't had a mixed berry cheesecake. All oh, those apricots are real good that's if you eat them without well. cooking them. If Don't you just do that. Oh, do it. Can I have one? Have the smell of it. You obviously can't smell on camera, but... Oh, Jesus, look at that chunk. That much. Oh. That's right, he gets his share of it. Mmm. Man, that is so good. That's your share, Dan. <laughs> what are the ingredients? Sugar. There's only 58.4 grams of sugar in there. Holy shit. That's a lot of sugar. Which one is it? The mixed berry. See, it used to be three fruits, didn't it? Yeah, you're right. It used right. to be three yeah, fruits, yeah, so it wasn't cake. three fruits, now it's mixed berry. Yeah, I wondered that the other day, I was trying yeah. to find the three fruits one, but I think it's been superseded by mixed berry. You're just hamming it up. Porridge. Yeah. Well, you know, they're getting to get the, the half dehydrated chunks in there as well. No, good, I'll tip it out. Nah, that, that, you probably don't want to eat any, Charlie. Probably shit is. Any good? Not really, because there's massive dry chunks in it. <laughs> oh, this, doesn't that make it real good, though? Massive, here, give no, me a go. No, no. Yeah. Come on, give me a taste. Jesus. And Charlie's not really into sharing, is he? You're the one that runs. This is hard to film yeah, and eat.
Ja. 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 I mean, I actually think it's better like this because you get the dry chunks and the yeah, texture yeah. and it's not all soggy. Us. Give me a guy. No, fuck, don't share it with him. <laughs> She'll be all over. Hell oh, yeah. See you guys later. Like, how good is that texture? It's so good, isn't it? It's like cold sick. <laughs> it is like cold sick. I reckon if you ate a whole bunch of dried berries and heaps of sugar, and then tip like a cup of flour down there and some wheat bits and then spewed it up and then ate it again straight away and that's it's probably what it would be like yeah and tastes like too how is that cold sick oh, look at that oh mate these backcountry meals are actually the the savory meals aren't very good they, they, you, you know what i mean when you have a shit the next day oh my goodness it just, it's explosive West Coast shit. It just comes out and it just goes, boom, fah, and it stings and it's, it, it can't be good for you, but these desserts. It takes about 30 wipes. It takes about 30 wipes to clean. Oh, yeah. Messy as, eh? Oh, the backcountry shirts are messy as, but these desserts, <whistles> man, they're next level. So, you should watch that last la um video of the Lambert. Oh, when we were here last Back year. country meals were worse, the actual dinner meals <laughs> were worse than the absolute wilderness. The absolute wilderness dinner meals were better, but the desserts of the back country were better. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, abs no, no, the absolute wilderness yogurt ice cream was pretty good, wasn't it? What was that absolute wilderness one? It was real good. Yeah, was it? No, I get absolute wilderness. It's, it's, it's a better... It's a bit of it's all round. Oh, Jesus, well. look at that. That's yeah, I think I added too much moist, but you look at that mm. chocolate sauce. That's, mm. your, that's your back country explosive shit the next morning. Yes. Right there, so this, is, this isn't going to end well in the morning. What do you reckon? That's it in a plate. You get all the big lumpy bits. A bit sickly. You don't like it. He doesn't like it. <laughs> It might have been that. What? Is it not sugary or something? He might have got a big lump of cocoa. What's going on there? Oh, oh. It's disgusting. Is it? It's it yuck. Like dog food. Oh. It's dog food not that good. <laughs> it's kind of fishy. Oh, really? Dog food. Chocolate brownie pudding. Yeah. It's got a seafood taste to it. <laughs> that was weird, eh? It's um It's a little bit fishy. Dog food. See what you think, Bryce. Hello. So I've got to get a lump of whatever it is, do I? Ooh, what's it that is just a big lump of stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't rate that one. Nah. It's so disappointing after the... What's your ingredients, mate? Yeah, it's nothing on there, right? But mind you, if we had it cooked it right, there's a massive lumps and yeah, chunks. Yeah, we added too much there. water. Is the sauce all right? There's only 84 grams of sugar in this one. So what flavour is this? Trim soy chai latte? Nah, samba Sam. flavour. I think they, they trim some of the samba's buck hairs and put it in there. I don't know why it's samba flavour, but I've never tasted samba before. Must be pretty good because the coffee's good. Oh. I'm heading out with my dry cup of oats. Dry cup of oats. Mm -hmm. Are you off up the hill, mate? Yep. See you in a couple of hours. See you later. Did Dave just get out of bed? I think so.
Oh. How's it going? Good morning, Dave. How's it there? Good. Well, good to go, Jack. Ah, oh, Charlie, fuck. I don't spill your oats, man. Don't spill your oats. I'd shake your hand, but I know you haven't washed them this morning and they've got <laughs> ball sweat all over them. Ball sweat all over them. See, that? I'm a little bit OCD with that. Wash your hands when you get up in the morning at tar camp because I know that blokes just scratch and they itch and then they come in and they touch everything. Good sleep. Anyway, I'm going to get what? Good sleep. Um, no? Yeah, nah. It was all right. I wasn't overly warm, but Whoa, I wasn't let's cold. Go. What are you waiting for? Oh, settle down. There's tar up on the mountains right now and it's going to get too late and the sun's going to come up. I can you see won't even it. be able quick, to quick. see them at the moment. He's got a good point. They're all going to go to, up the hill or back down to the scrub wherever they go and go to sleep. We should be up the valley now. We should have walked up in the dark, but we didn't. Look, it's already quite light out here, isn't it? I was ready in the dark. I was ready to go, and you were just sitting around. Talking about coffee and OCD. Yeah, but anyway, that's a good point, actually, for those inexperienced tar hunters that are watching this video to learn more about tar hunting. If you're going to get up early and go hunting, you need to get up in the dark and you need to get up that valley so you're way up where the tar live as that light changes. Because as that light changes, they either walk back up into the cliffs historically or these days because of the helicopter pressure. Well, that was me. These days, because the helicopter pressure, they more often than not, the older ones anyway, go back down into the scrub. So if you're going to get up and go hunting early, but you leave camp when the sun's cracking, waste of time. Because by the time you get up there, the tar are already back up in the cliffs while they're down in the scrub. But, oh no, it's a hard one. You either get up really early to go tar hunting, or you just get on the piss at night, sleep in till midday, and then get up the hill and be up the hill for when it gets dark. Two different ways to approach it. But if you're really motivated and you do get up early and you walk up the valley in the dark, you can get a tar in the morning. Dad, let's go! Oh, look, our fridge is getting deflated. Yeah, it's going to be dry soon. We're going to have to go. We're going to have to go a long way to get our water. Up the hill. Jumped the gun, didn't he, our young buck? You got your hat? Yes. Bang! That one completely missed. There's another nanny with her now. Let's see where the bullet hits. No. Come on, scrap it out. Scrap it. Don't bang the tripod, eh? Horns are bigger. One one on the left. Right. Don't know. I don't want one's bigger. I thought they were going to scrap, but they didn't. Damn it. Whoa! Ho -ho! He's trying to get up that cliff. He just tried again and failed. He's like, oh, I don't know. Come on. He's like, I don't know. I'll get up. Come on. Oh, he's like, nah, if he just charged up, he'd make it. Come on, you pussy, get up there. Oh, come on. Oh. Come on, you pussy, push on. Come on. Oh, get up there. Oh, he's made it. Come on, mate, you can do it. Oh, is he? He's going to give the crack a crack. He's giving the crack a crack. Speak to me, Char. Hey? I 
We safety off. All right, I'm rolling aim like two feet above them. Oh! Oh, mate, that was like just what above its head. Oh, wait, you need your earplugs. I don't know. What do you reckon, Bryce? Is this ball was shootable for Charlie? Very hard to spot. Have a look at that, folks. See if you can see him. He's right in the middle of the screen. You can see his head. Dead tar. I reckon, actually, I reckon, Charlie, you could probably shoot that one. What do you reckon? At least that'll get you on the board. Can you see him, can you? The one that was just moving around. He's sitting down. Is he? Nah. Alright, this is a uh, cooking 101 with Josh and Charlie. For those of you uh, who are shit cooks and don't know how to cook, you basically just make it up as you go along. And I consider myself a reasonably good cook. And the way that I make new dishes or improve on old ones is I just think what would taste good with something. Oh, first of all I think of something that tastes good and then I think what would taste good with that. And I just make it up as I go along. And you just throw shit in the pot and add a little bit here a little bit there and the more you do that the more you start to realize that certain flavors go with others and what you're aiming for is salty sweet sour and hot if you can get all of those combined and basically the same dish then you're doing all right so today we're going to cook kumara and we're going to put some bacon in there and we're going to put a little bit of egg in there as well and for the sweet we might use just a touch of honey and then some salt and pepper, just super basic, but I guarantee it's going to come out cracking. So, um, let's crack into it. I've got a tin of spaghetti. <laughs> Bryce has got a tin of spaghetti. That might go quite well in it. That's a, such a good idea for a camp pot, a, um, a wok, and you just jam a stick into it. It's a pretty dirty wok, but it's a, it's, um, a great idea. Last night I was saying that the MSR cookers are better than the jet boil. I don't think MSR bring out a real big cooker. This is the big jet boil and it is just the cat's pajamas. It's, uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's big though, it holds 1.5 litres of water. I think it's 1.5 or is it 2? Maybe even 2 litres and it cooks stuff real quick, especially you've got a grunty gas cooker like this one. Sausage has been in the freezer for three years. Better, does it? It's still alright though, hopefully. Cheers, Dan. Dan McCarrow donated us those. Let's go. You're in gators and I'm in nothing. Right, you want me to get wet feet just so we both get wet feet so you feel more comfortable? So I don't get swept away. What? So I don't get swept away. I hear you, but I don't think you're going to get swept. How about I stand on that rock and if you get swept away, I'll save you. Alright. What? <laughs> Sounds good. What? Sounds good. <laughs> I don't actually know if I'm going to keep my feet dry, but I'll give it a bash. You can do it. 
It's not even that swift across there. No, you do it. It's not real deep. Go. I don't know if you've done that. Yeah, you can. You'll get wet feet. You want to give it a go? Yeah, but you hold my bag. That's where my bag is. You reckon you can jump? I can't. You want me to take the gun and your bag and everything and you want to jump? Yeah. Why don't you chuck me the pack? I'll go first. Right. Or maybe I'll just get one wet foot instead of two. Why you go and then Dan, I'll, you go and then what? I, and then you jump. And then I jump and grab your hand. Sounds legit. All right, I'm gonna try Jesus across so only one foot gets wet. I think that actually worked. Oh, <laughs> is this gonna happen? Charlie's legs aren't as long as mine. I think he's going to come and get to. Like <laughs> <laughs> oh, my knee. Oh, one of us got dry feet anyway. Oh, my, feet. <laughs> my shins are a bit wet, but my feet are dry. Ah, oh, that was gold. Are your feet still dry? Oh, so. All right, it's all fun and games to Jesus at across the river, but you got to weigh up risk versus reward. Is it worth getting a broken leg or a twisted ankle just to keep dry feet, or is it better to just get wet feet or to take your boots and socks off and walk across and put them on afterwards? It's a hard one. Only you guys can make that call, I guess. And my feet are dry, so I'm pretty happy about that. I think we're gonna have to walk through the river to get back to camp. We did see a young bull up on here, that's why we took the risk. We've arrived and we've found a young bull up there, but he's only young, he's only small. I to Charlie whether he wants to take him or not. Put the camera on him, have a bit of a look at him. He's not very big. What do you reckon? I reckon when he comes out from behind that rock. You gonna shoot him? We snot him. Uh, Charlie wants to snot him. There's been a bit of debate online recently about not shooting young bulls, only shooting old bulls, but if he was an old bull and we shot it, it wouldn't matter, but because he's a young bull and we're going to shoot it, it matters, which I don't really understand. So do you not shoot nannies because they might have a bull that might grow into an old bull? I don't quite get that mentality. If someone could explain it to me, that would be great. I understand that if you shoot a young bull, he's not going to grow into an old bull, but then if I was to come back in, say, five years and shoot that same bull that I've passed up now, I get just as much pleasure out of shooting him in five years than I did now because I'm after skins, not horns. Does that make it more acceptable? I don't really understand that mentality. If someone could explain it to me, I've thought about it and I think I'm missing something here. Like shooting a velvety stag, a lot of people get a little bit upset when people shoot velvety stags especially ones with good genetics. Understandable it could be a trophy, but if someone wants to fill the freezer, what about a spiker? A spiker could go into a trophy stag. You just don't know, so you do not shoot spikers either. Never quite understood that mentality. Anyway, if you think you understand it, comment below, fill me in. How far away is he, mate? How far away is he? 360. Smoked him. Crack, he didn't roll down. He needs to be stopped. Nah, he ran to his side. Shit. Where did he go? Left. Oh, that hit his guts. Oh, oh he's coming. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't read about it. Charlie missed him. Just to the right. Boom, there was a rock just in front of him and then pole axed him and he's gone gone to ground and then Charlie's hit him again just shot him right in the middle to try and jump him down the hill 
and he's let out, started rolling, and then he's hung up and he hasn't come down. Oh. What happened? Well, we were watching the video, and Dad's like, oh, I might pay to look if um, he rolls down. And I, just as I looked over, he just I just seen this thing going, like, boom. Oh. All right. Let's go get him. That was a big four. He'd be munted, I'd say. See that waterfall? Now we just got to get over there and clean them up before it gets dark. He's here somewhere where you can smell them. Yeah. Smell the guts. Be careful, mate. Just take your time. Charlie can't remember where he fell, so he saw him fell and hurt, but he didn't take a good mental note of where exactly it was. And we're up here now, and of course it looks totally different, and it's actually quite steep where we're standing. So, and it's getting dark. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to find him. Don't have to walk all the way out there tomorrow. Oh, I got him. It's up! Woo! Got by. Alright, time to get it done. It's getting dark. Uh, a couple of k away from camp. Not too far though. Horns are snapped off, that's alright, we'll glue them back on. Oh, one of them. Get a wiggle. Need to swap out the batteries and Charlie's black diamond head torch, she's getting a bit flat. How you doing mate? Bit knackered? Mm-hmm. Good work mate. <laughs> Fucking with all that bombing up. Come you guys here a couple of Thank shots? Yeah, oh, just a couple, yeah. Where'd they oh, come from? Oh, is this our dinner? Yeah, mate. Awesome. We've done dishes for you. Can't do it. What happened, Charlie? Well, at first, we were coming down here, right, with the binos, and um, we seen that young bull. On the other like, side of the river, or this yeah, side? The other side. Oh, like, you oh, crossed, yeah, did you? We should go for him, and then we went across, and I gave. I was carrying the gun all the way and I gave Dad the gun across the river in my bag and I made a leap and then I got here yeah, my wrist wet. Not my boots, my shins were the tiniest bit damp. And then we moved on up there, got closer and closer, it was still there, it disappeared into this bush. Was he up that gutter? Uh, and when... It was that little one we saw this morning. The oh, big yeah. the big one I mean we saw this morning. Yeah, on the, on the wall? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, we came in and we were oh yeah, and we came in and we got the camera set up and we were oh yeah, is it good to shoot? And then it went behind this rock and I couldn't even see, I couldn't, I didn't get the chance to see if it was good to shoot on the camera. And we were looking for it and then it popped out and then it disappeared. And then it popped out again. 
And I aimed high in its shoulder, like Dad told me to. And you being your patient self would just say, well, just wait, Dad, till it comes out again, right? And yeah, and then, um, boom. And Dad's like, pull X, then it ran. And I thought, and I went out of my scope, and I thought I'd seen it run down to this, um, thing bit. But it ran down, and it was sitting there, I was like, Sitting the thing, it was sitting in the thing bit, wasn't it? What is a thing bit? Explain it. It was sitting I don't know, but it was sitting in the thing bit. Stop! Stop! It was about like 50. What, the thing bit? I think the thing bit was. It was a. You guys. You guys both have a lot of teeth for a smart ass. And we seen it, and it was laying down. I was like, oh yeah, it's dead ass. And I was like, oh yeah, we'll try and shoot it to roll it down the hill. Poof. Like just low, poof. The sign there's like, hold on, give me a shot. Just low and then just and high. It looked like he had it just in the middle, but I don't know there. And he's like, oh yeah, I'll have another crack at it. And it kind of was a wee bit disappearing. And, and he shot it in the guts. Oh yeah. Well, its guts were hanging out. And oh then, no. And then he ran down the hill into this bush bit, and he got hung up. And I'm like, oh, and all he rolled, he went. And then to this bush bit and That's what he, nah, he you got, wouldn't be able to get he up got there. caught and yeah. no nah, it was right there. And I was like, bugger and dad were looking at the footage and dad's like, check up check up there just in case it falls and just as I was looking I just seen this thing. That was lucky, eh? We were both looking at it and I said, Charlie, you might want to just keep an eye on it. And as soon as I looked over I just down. seen this thing falling. And how far down did it get? And not, then we, not far from the bottom. And then we went up there and we couldn't find it and we smelt it and we went up and I was like, Dad, it's up there. He's like, oh, no, it's not. There we go. Whatever. And then. It's <laughs> up here. Did you say that again? Yeah. <laughs> How did that go exactly? No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. I was yeah. like, I was like Dad, Dad, it's, I, think it, I think it came down exactly up there. He's like, no, it's not here. So you actually yeah. got to where it... Uh, you hey, hang on a minute. Who found then, it in the end, Lord Mark? Wait, wait, wait. You just wait. Who till found I it? the story. And then, you, and then you, they will find it. And I went up and we were looking around. and It's going to be hard to make you look good on this. I knew where it landed. It landed where I thought. And then Dad went up there and he's like, oh. And I was like, Dad, 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 Dad. And he thought he was falling down the hill and died and I was screaming. So, yeah. He's not up here. He was on the camera. Is that when I was up the cliff? And he's like, oh, and he's like, oh, I think that was here. I was like, yeah, that's where I thought it was at first. So he went down and climbed it. He's like, I smell it. And he got up there and he's like, and rolled it down. Nice. And there was a hole in the back of it with guts pouring through it. Like, what do you got there? You should be running around your neck, mate. Gonna tan it. Gonna tan it. I'm just gonna. And put your put your coins in it. Should be a bit rich at the moment, boys. You're on dinner, Charlie. Oh, did you know how long that took for me to get up the mountain, get those very rare tomatoes and um, the uh, mushrooms, come down, beat it out of there. Hang on take a minute. Take its tongue out, cut who's, the, make who's, pasta out of it. Are you paying for the helicopter? Hmm, well, I've just carried a tyrant and then the gun down the hill. Go cook and us I've some got dinner. wet boots from walking through the river and you didn't even hold the gun. Charlie, Forrest you're one of those blokes that probably shouldn't drink or get drunk. Forrest told me that ask a cow shouldn't get Charlie, because Charlie's a real good cook. He runs around camp, like, and does everything. Gets the water, cooks everyone. That's what I told him. Look well, after I, I, I was, I was getting the water. Last time Last I went months. all the way down. Charlie's actually a real good cook. I'm videoing here, Charlie. If you want to get some browning points, let's start that again. And you go, sure, I'll cook you guys dinner. Sure, I'll cook you guys dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blatant lie. Get out there and cook us some dinner. Come on, mate. I just need a rest till the morning. Oh, nice, nice. Look at that. Steak and onion, mounted cheese. It's not that spread. It's quite wide, isn't it? Yeah. And then let it go on. Push it in. It's convertible. Oh, wait, yeah. hang on a minute. Oh, no, it's only five inches. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no, 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 hold it. 13, no, it's just under 14. You were looking at the wrong oh, side. Okay, yeah. 13 and three quarters. Right. Nice, Char. That's a good animal, mate.
And we thought it was only going to go eight inches too. They look way bigger when they hit the ground, eh? Heaps of people get ground shrinkage. We seem to get ground enlargement. 